Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see you as y'all start to join in the crowd. Robin, I'm so glad you could be here today. And Trey, good to see you again. Marnie, I can't see Hi, you though. There you are. Hey, Erin. Good to How see are you. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Good. I'm glad to be continuing to move forward. Jonathan, Excellent. how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So I'm curious, are, are, are y'all learning anything from your audit? We are. We are actually, so we're, do, we're working with the same group uh, at, with Main Street, South Carolina, and we've got one more week of our lessons in that, and then we'll start our local stuff here. Um, but we did find out that our businesses are missing about, let's see, they're usually utilizing about three or four of 20 potential social um, engagement aspects. So we're going to be working on trying to increase all of that. Wow. So that's, that's, th those are good findings so far. Yes. Good. Amy, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Good. The cat better? Um, yes, much better. Still daughtery, but, um, he kind of doesn't know where he is, but he's alive. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Steve Johnson. Good to see you. Good to see you. I have an assistant today. Oh, look at that. Who is oh. that? She's 11 months old. So. What's her name? Maggie. Maggie. Oh, my goodness. Oh, welcome to Maggie. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. you're starting her early. That's right. I believe in that. So, got her own self, sort of. <laughs> okay, good. Not good. Really. Yeah. Tim Jeter, nice to meet you. It's great to see everyone. Yes, glad you could be here. And Rick, good to see you as well. Yes, and Mark Madden, we, we know you're there, but we can't see you. Oh. And Laurie, nice to see you today. Yes, I'm here. Probably can't hear me either, right? Uh, I, we just heard you, Mark. <laughs> good, so how are things, we have a, how are things going for you? Me? Yes. Oh, I'm doing well. Okay. Not complain. All right, good. Has anybody got any good news, interesting news before we jump in? Well, I'll just say I'm a new entrepreneur. Um, I'm Lori Roven. Um, I've been in the nonprofit sector for 40 years, and now I'm retired, semi-retired, I guess, turned 60, and now I'm consulting in the nonprofit sector. So this is my first time doing any of these entrepreneur calls. So I look forward to learning from people. Good. Well, Lori, nice to meet you, and welcome as well. <laughs> Raj, good to see you as well. Good. All right, well, why, well, let's go ahead and get started. We have um, used up four minutes of our 60, and when we're on these calls, time becomes a little bit um, more, a little less open-ended. Um, but as you all may know, I am Erin Oots. I facilitate our state entrepreneur ecosystem uh, here, and um, we will have more folks joining us, I'm sure, as we continue. But this is our typical quarterly workshop where we get together to connect, learn, and empower. Uh, but because we're not getting together in person, we are taking our quarterly workshops and breaking them down into hourly, monthly workshops. So this is uh, 2020 workshop 3B, or the second one of the third quarter. Uh, and uh, Justine, next slide, please. And we will, you, we always start off with connecting with each other. Uh, this particular time, if you would please post in the chat box, and the chat box is at the very bottom of your screen. You may have to toggle your mouse a little bit to see the little chat box, and please enter your name and your organization. And the question today is, where are the entrepreneurs you work with, or if you're an entrepreneur, um, where are they learning startup and general business skills? Where are you going? Where are you sending them? Where are they getting those skills from you? Where are they learning these general startup and business skills? So that's the question for the day. All right. Now I'll give you everybody a second or two. 
to start that. Good. Um, all right, Justine. The next one, please. All right. So why do we why do we get together? Well, first of all, we get together as a group to increase our entrepreneur ecosystems ability and capacity to help entrepreneurs be more successful faster. So we are helping the whole ecosystem. We're not helping just one individual. We are not helping just one subset of entrepreneurs. We're helping the ecosystem at large. Next, please. Uh, and who are we that gets together? We are anyone or any entity that supports entrepreneurship and the many different types of entrepreneurs. So we can be support organizations, we can be banks, we can also be uh, an entrepreneur ourselves. Uh, generally, it's an entrepreneur that is, has time to give back to the ecosystem and other entrepreneurs. Uh, so that's, that's who we are. And then go ahead, Justine. And I've added a new slide for us just to all remember and rem that we're on the same page when we think of who an entrepreneur is. It's anyone who has started is starting or growing a venture that provides a product or service and plans to produce revenue. This is, uh, allows us to encompass all types of businesses, all types of entrepreneurs, all um, styles of money making. So that's, so we just wanna continue to remember that we're all encompassing. Uh, next, please. Uh, so today, at our Today's activities, we are continuing the best practices uh, workshops that we've been doing. And as always, we will connect with each other as we're doing in the chat room uh, through the chat. If you would please, the question of the day for people who are just joining us, the question of the day is, um, where are the entrepreneurs you work with learning startup and general business skills? So again, it's where are the entrepreneurs you work with learning startup and general business skills. And if it's from you, please say from us. If, it, it's, if you have no idea, question marks work just fine. Uh, as can be, I have no idea. Uh, so, so, today, so today we are gonna learn from Michael Nail, as always in our Legal Minute with Michael. And then we're gonna learn from Paul Clark and Robin Hesse-Farrell as they talk about resiliency for entrepreneurs and a tool that they have available to that can be with an entrepreneur 24 seven to aid in their resiliency. Uh, we will empower ourselves to take the information that we learn and go back to our communities, go back to our entrepreneurs and use what is necessary or what we think is gonna be the best practices in our own communities and with our own teams. Uh, next, Justine. Um, our workshops so far this year uh, re related to best practices, uh, we started, they really started with the things that we learned about COVID-19 and the lockdown. The businesses anecdotally had three large issues. Uh, the first one being that they couldn't communicate with their customers uh, digitally after the lockdown. Uh, they had, they just didn't have skills in that area. The second one was when they went for funding for PPP and EIDL funds, their financial statements weren't prepared or they weren't in a really good, good enough state. So it delayed them getting to approval. And then the other, the third thing is, was about the resiliency that entrepreneurs who tended to be more successful were those who could adapt to the changes to make their business continue to be successful or continue to move forward within that. And as you know, the, as you may have seen in the email, the definition of resiliency is, of course I put it down here, has to do with uh, the ability to adapt, uh, to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. Well, if that's not exactly <laughs> what we've been going through. So that's what today is about. Um, in September, on the 23rd, we will talk about Global Entrepreneurship Week. Uh, our planning in the past has been all around events. Well, events are not really going to be a thing this year, so we have all kinds of opportunities to go down new paths and see what good ideas we can come up with. So we will discuss that in September. In October, our workshop is going to be on mentoring. Uh, Cynthia Sims 
from uh, Clemson, or MIMS, so, uh, from Clemson, a professor at Clemson, is going to give us an overview of the differences between mentoring, coaching, sponsoring, consulting. And then we're going to talk to a couple of different programs about what they do and what's been successful for them in the mentoring, as they define it, um, the, uh, with their entrepreneurs. November, no meeting. We will celebrate Global Entrepreneurship Week. And in December, we will have our legal best practices with uh, Ogletree Deacon. So, Michael, we're looking forward to that again. Um, Justine? Um, a quick reminder, Global Entrepreneurship Week is November 16th through 22nd. The state of South Carolina now has a state global entrepreneurship, I mean, GEW coordinator. Greenville has a coordinator. If you would like to be a coordinator for your community, please make a note in the chat and I will connect you with all the right people. It gets you access to, easier access to resources. The state is looking at putting funding behind promotion for Global Entrepreneurship Week. So a couple other things. So if you would like to do that for your community, put it in the uh, chat area. All right, next, please. Uh, other announcements. Uh, we have a, our 10 at the top website with the Upstate Vibe 365 calendar. And Justine, we don't need to look at that this time. Um, it has not only community events, but it does have our business events. I noticed that the Anderson Morning Brew is listed, but also uh, Mark, I mean, Steve, one of your uh, SCRA events, or there it's listed, um, and I'm sure others are because I keep sending them over. But please, if you have events, email Justine or either go to the Upstate Vibe 365 website. There is a button on the kind of middle right-hand side that you can click for posting your own events. You can upload your own art, all of that. And the more business events we get in there, uh, the more it will get used. Um, the previous webinars and workshops are on the Economic and Entrepreneur Vitality to the top website. And Justine, would you go to that then, please? And we have been doing some rearranging of that. Uh, so now we have a section uh, towards the bottom with our new logo that's Entrepreneur Resources. Because we serve two different audiences, one of which is the support providers or those who are uh, working with entrepreneurs, but then entrepreneurs themselves, we've separated out into a little box, our Entrepreneur Resources, and that's called now Start, Grow, Upstate, which I will talk about a little bit more later. Um, but those Entrepreneur Resources are solely committed to directing entrepreneurs to all of you. We are not the knowledge, um, we don't have knowledge, of, we're, we're not the knowledge or the subject matter experts in particular areas, all of you are. So we just send the entrepreneurs your way. Uh, thank you, Justine. All right, so next slide. So we also have the eShip Summit. And this is actually a probably a once, one time ever opportunity. Since this eShip Summit is going to be virtual, they have reduced the pricing to $95 a person. But if you bring a crowd of three people or more, they will reduce it by 25%, uh, which is uh, very substantial because of nothing else flying to Kansas City is very expensive from our area. The other thing that they're doing at this particular summit is they're taking the first two days and asking for communities to bring delegations and they're going to talk specifically about how to build out your ecosystem to support your entrepreneurs. Uh, they usually talk about the, prof the profession of ecosystem building, but this is going to be about the ecosystem builders and how do you do the work in your backyard. Uh, so it, the first two days will be uh, as useful and helpful as anything that we could we could get. Uh, the other big news is that the Upstate will be featured on the 16th. Um, I've been asked to do a workshop about our Upstate. It's essentially going. To, it's um, the the title of it is uh, something y'all familiar with. 
Connect, learn, empower, creating an ecosystem of trust to serve upstate South Carolina entrepreneurs. Uh, so go upstate. And um, so, so we'll be doing that, or I'll be doing that on uh, the 16th at one. So uh, any, if y'all have suggestions for how you think that, how to you, what we do every month builds trust and support for our entrepreneurs, please put that in the chat as well, or email me because it's much more powerful and much more realistic for me to take your comments and share them with other people from around the country and around the world. So, so I'm looking forward to hearing from y'all on that. All right, next, please. All right, Start, Grow, Upstate. As you know, we've been working on this. Uh, we have our final logo, uh, the arrow being pointing out to show that entrepreneurs come in and then they launch out to go where they need for resources. Uh, the most important thing here is the survey. We have been sending around a survey, at, working on um, uh, trying to understand our specialties around the, around the 10 counties. And um, the survey, there's a link to the survey here, but we will continue to send emails out to you with the survey link. If you have not filled it out, please do. And also please send it to those of you who know, those you know who work with entrepreneurs. And to make this extra special, for anyone who fills out a survey um, by Friday at two o'clock, they will be entered into a drawing to win a ticket to the next uh, venture pitch on uh, September 15th through 17th. So this is a, what a $50, I don't even know the value, $50 value. Um, so so it's, it's an important thing and it's actually more in the morning where in the afternoon is the e-ship summit. But did I have, did someone have a question? No. Okay. All right, Laurie, I see that we will send you. Yeah, no, I see it on the webs on the screen. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, um, well, the startgrowupstate.org is not a working website yet. That is to let you know that we are making progress. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> With our website. I'm a newbie. All right, <laughs> then send the survey. <laughs> hey, you know, we feel like, you know, we're really making progress. We have our own, we have a website and we have a logo. So next slide. Aaron, it, it does actually redirect to uh, the entrepreneur web page. Oh, okay. So you can go through there. But Justine, if you put the link in for the survey in the chat. Oh, that'd be great. Yes, Dean, thank you. Um, and the survey is really a strength profile and it's all of your answers will kind of give us a baseline on, on the resources that we have available. But also it will give us information on it will lead us into how to build, how to, um, we're going to do videos that are very narrow topic specific on all the different resources that we have in our area. Uh, so for example, if you work with Main Street businesses in the startup, we would have a video for you. If you also work with Main Street videos as they are, I mean, with Main Street businesses as they're growing, that would be a separate video so that all of these very topic specific videos can be captured on our Start Grow website, but also that they're searchable. So that if somebody says, I'm starting a Main Street business or starting a retail business or starting um, a biotech business, then it will start, things will actually start to come up in searches. And that's what's, what we're trying to accomplish. These videos are not owned by anybody. If you want to have them on your website, you can. If you want to have responses and information from the poll, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, links are very, linking to each other's websites are also very important because that helps um, the search function or, or us, come, us rise a little bit higher in search results. So as we get these done, we will continue to, to, do, to figure all that out. All right, Justine. Thank you. All right, so now I have a poll for you. So we, we last time in July, Earl Gregorich talked about raising our expectations of what our entrepreneurs will do relative to, um, relative to preparing their financial statements. Sorry, I got distracted by a great question by Trey Teese in the chat. Um, so, so, but our poll didn't work. 
So we, we've decided that we're going to do this poll at every single meeting. Even though it won't be scientific, it will at least start to give us some kind of visual understanding of where we are in how and asking for financial statements from our entrepreneurs. So the first question is going to be, do you ask to see financial statements on a regular basis? So Justine, and we can, do we do, we do this both at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, and then the second one is gonna be approximately, what percentage of your clients have financial statements? Yeah. All right, so while you're doing that poll, if anybody's got any questions, comments, thoughts, this is a good time. Oh, I need to. All right. Has it come? They coming in, Dean? Yeah, we're about halfway. Uh, just four or five more people. Okay. So All we'll right. give it another another few seconds if uh, if you haven't participated yet. Okay. Um, I see that there. Does anybody have any questions about the videos that we're doing? You may have any concerns? No? Is this a good thing for us to spend our time on? Or I can nod if you want to. Or... Yes? No? Okay. All right. Well, all right. Good. So, Dean, how are we looking? Good. I'm sharing the results now. Okay. So we're in a two thirds, one third situation with how many ask for the financial statements now. Oh, and how interesting, 80% of our clients have the financial statements. So that begs an interesting question, which I'm not gonna ask right now. So if no, Pearl were here- 33% have- For me? Yeah, that, that's the number one answer. 33% of the respondents said 80% of their clients have financial statements. Yes. So, you know, well, and if we look at oh, the 50% and 80%, that's, you know, 53% of our clients actually have the financial statements. Right. So it, it might be interesting to know if those are annual or if they are doing them monthly. Yes. Yes. So, um, this is hopefully will make y'all think about why we aren't asking monthly and just making sure that folks are, are reading them correctly too. Uh, but if they're doing them that often, then, well, all right. See, I wish Earl were here because he would have all kinds of great questions to ask. Michael, did you want to ask something? Oh, okay. Nope, just adjusting my camera. Thank you. Oh, okay. All right, great. All right. Well, thank you all. We'll see how things go next month. All right, on to the next. Now we're going to move on to the learning part of our meeting, and Michael is going to kick us off with his legal minute. All right, go ahead, Michael. Thanks, Aaron. Um, so glad to be with you all today. Good afternoon. Um, can you move to the next slide for me? All right, so just a recap of what we talked about over the last several months. Obviously, COVID has uh, changed the landscape of employment law in, in, in many different uh, ways, but we have talked about the new federal legislation that came down in March, uh, the Families First Coronavirus Response Act, which applies to employers with less than 500 employees. We talked about the emergency paid sick leave associated with that, the emergency FMLA, we also touched very briefly on the CARES Act, uh, the PPP uh, aspect of the CARES Act, and, and more importantly, from my perspective, the unemployment aspect as well. We then moved on to different trends associated with possible claims that employees might bring against their employers if they can track COVID-19 and claim that they did so at work. And that is the workers' compensation presumption laws, um, we have seen many states around the country implement laws that say if an employee is required to work during the pandemic and they can track COVID-19, that they did so at work so they can, they can obtain workers' comp benefits. Um, South Carolina has legislation pending on this topic. Uh, there hasn't been much movement on it since May, so it remains to be seen whether it's passed, um, but there is a 
uh, pending law in South Carolina on that topic. Also liability protections, uh, shields that employers can use if their employees uh, bring a civil lawsuit against the employer alleging that the employer did not take certain steps and they contracted the virus and were were harmed by that virus. South Carolina also has pending legislation on this topic, uh, but it has not yet been passed yet. So those are two things to keep an eye on. Uh, last time we moved on to best practices, some of the CDC guidelines, the South Carolina DHEC guidelines as well about how to keep employees safe in the workplace and, and really that that's the right thing to do and it helps uh, create a defense if an employee were to contract COVID-19 uh, that, that they will be they will not be successful in proving that the employer did anything wrong basically uh, to cause that contraction to occur at work. Um, and we also talked about what happens if an employee gets sick, what are the guidelines related to quarantine and, and all of that. So can you move on to the next slide for me? So last time at the end of the meeting, uh, an individual asked whether I could go into uh, independent contractors, the difference between those and employees and really the, the impact of that on a business or on an employer. And I thought to myself, that's probably a topic that's better left for the December meeting when we can go into more detail on it or possibly break it up over um, a number of uh, meetings uh, because it will take a little bit more time to get through that. I know that's the, an important issue for you all, so I'm gonna touch on that um, as quickly as I can, but I wanted to stay in line with what we have done so far, specifically related to COVID-19. Uh, one of the questions that I get, and there's a lot of articles out there on, is COVID-19 liability waivers, whether an employer should um, basically force an employee to sign a waiver saying that they can't sue the employer for a COVID-19 related issue um, and whether that's permissible. And I will tell you that it usually and most likely will not be permissible. It will not hold up in court um, because most of, most of the laws that would apply, particularly workers' compensation, wouldn't allow um, an employee to prospectively waive his or her right to obtain workers' compensation benefits. That's gonna apply to most employment laws related to the issue of a COVID-19 contraction or other type of claim that an employee could um, bring against an employer related to the virus. So uh, in, in most cases, I would say almost 100% of the time, they're not gonna be enforceable in relation to employees, it's pretty clear that you cannot waive your rights prospectively uh, that have not yet vested under the law. And they're just generally disfavored um, among the courts uh, in South Carolina and in most states. Um, could you still have an employee sign a waiver? Sure. Um, again, it probably wouldn't be enforceable, uh, but at a minimum, it could have a deterrent effect. So for example, if an employee does sign a waiver, they might be thinking that they can't sue the employer, whether they can or not, uh, they might be thinking that. So some employers like to do that if there's some sort of uh, field trip or outing, so to speak, uh, you wanna have a social event uh, off campus, this happens a lot and, and you'll have an employer sign a waiver again probably won't be enforceable, but it just gets that employee thinking about the potential ramifications of, of not um, uh, being safe while they're away and, and all of that. So it could have a deterrent effect, but it could also have a downside if you decide to do it, uh, because it might also give the employee the impression, whether it's true or not, that the employer isn't going to take the necessary precautions uh, at, at the workplace and trying to prevent the spread of the illness. So uh, that gives you a brief recap on the employee side. For independent contractors as well, these waivers probably wouldn't be enforceable. Um, again, the courts generally disfavor them. Uh, they view them as 
um, against public policy. They're generally disfavored and they usually say that the company has some sort of unequal bargaining power over that um, individual. So it is more likely to be enforceable just because they're not covered by uh, most employment laws, but it's probably still unenforceable. And this is something we'll talk about when we get into more detail about independent contractors. Uh, but, but there's many instances where uh, companies think that they have hired an independent contractor, but in reality, that relationship is an employee employer relationship. And that can have a lot of different consequences. Uh, we see it a lot, particularly weighted related to wage and hour issues, not paying um, an individual properly that the company believes is an independent contractor, but is really an employee. Um, so that is an important issue that we'll, we'll talk about when we have a little bit more time. Uh, can you move on to the next slide for me? So again, if you, there's, there's no real you know, there's, there's not really a downside to having a waiver, except the fact that it's probably not worth the, the paper that's written on. Um, but if you were to have a waiver um, or some, one of the entrepreneurs asked a question about it, um, it, it would need to be very clear language uh, to show a court potentially that the individual knew exactly uh, what they were releasing, what they were giving up as far as their rights, that they're assuming the risk. It clearly identifies any claims that they're waiving. Um, it's conspicuous. You know, there's not any uh, hidden small print letters at the bottom of the page. Everything is very clear, understandable, and easily seen on the page. Um, and you also want to put in there just that the company is complying with all applicable guidelines. Uh, just as another layer of protection uh, for that employee. So moving on to the next slide for me. And again, I uh, always have to mention that Ogletree has a lot of resources um, on the website. We have a COVID-19 resource center uh, that has a lot of information. Uh, depending on your, your learning style, we have articles, frequently asked questions, podcasts. I just recorded a podcast on workers' compensation issues, um, these presumption laws across the country. Uh, we try to keep these pretty short, 10 to 15 minutes so that you can listen to them on your commute to work or, or just uh, very briefly whenever you have time throughout the day. Um, all that's complimentary on our website. Um, there are also uh, FFCRA compliance documents and other, other more detailed documents that, that we have for a flat fee. Um, but a lot of that might not apply to, to your entrepreneurs. But just wanted to let you know, there are plenty of resources we have out there. Um, and I encourage you to, to continue to track these COVID-19 issues. Um, the, the trends and the, the developments, the changes are, are slowing down a bit um, from, from back in March, April, May timeframe, but it's, it's a, still a developing issue. Obviously, this is a, a novel pandemic. So, with that, I really appreciate your time today. And, and like I said, I'm gonna try to develop uh, some, some resources related to independent contractors versus employees as we move forward, if that's something that would still be helpful for you all. Um, and also talk about non-compete agreements. That's something that has um, continually come up when I ask about topics uh, uh, related to employment issues. So with that, um, I think I'm, I'm good for the day. If, if there's no questions right now, we might not have time for any anyway, um, but I have to step off, unfortunately, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions you have, as always, outside of the meeting. Michael, thank you very much. If you have questions for Michael, um, please post them in the chat and we can send them to him. And um, Michael, thanks again. I know that you are traveling, so we appreciate you dialing in. No problem. Thank you for All having right. me, Erin. Thanks. All right. See you next month. All right. So now we are going to continue our learning with um, best practices on resiliency. In the spring, we had Beth Freeman talk about how to, she's an ind industrial and occupational psychologist, and she talked with us about how to help our employees or how your entrepreneurs help their employees adjust to the changes 
the constant changes. Uh, but now this is very specifically for an entrepreneur. Um, um, there's, I know Robin and, and, um, and Paul so well, it's kind of hard to know how to, where to start with the introduction. Robin is the founder of Resiliency Technologies, which the main product is Sharpen. Uh, it has a bright, it's a platform that, that they will explain to you. Specifically, we're gonna talk about Sharpen Founder today. Uh, Paul is one of the managing partners with Venture South, uh, and they, he's speaking to us through uh, Venture Carolina though. That's their nonprofit arm that, and he can tell you uh, specifically what it's charged with, but they have created, partnered with Sharpen for a tool to help entrepreneurs 24 seven have um, access to support. Is that a good way to put it? That's good. So I'm gonna turn it over to Robin and Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Uh, thanks everybody for taking the time to chat. Um, I am, if I'm anything like you, you've been on the receiving end of about 20 million slides over the course of the last six months over Zoom. So I'm gonna spare you that particular mm -hmm. pain for today. Um, but I am going to, if I can, share my screen and share a few web pages with you guys um, to give you something more entertaining to look at than just my desperate need for a haircut. Uh, so I'm going to kick things off, um, first of all, by saying thank you to everybody for taking the time to learn a bit more about this um, and to give you a bit of background about why this is something that uh, we think is an important part of supporting the entrepreneurial ecosystem uh, that is often a, a, a missed part or one that comes further down the, the pecking order of things that are important than, than perhaps it should do. Um, so I will, uh, hopefully you guys can see my screen, um, which is a, a whole bunch of web pages, but hopefully you can see that. Um, nod if anybody can see that. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so just to start things, maybe at a high level, um, it's uh, Obvious if you know it, and a complete surprise if you don't, that mental health issues affect a lot more people than people realize. Um, the National Alliance on Mental Health, this NAMI organization, do a lot of work on, on estimating the prevalence of mental health issues. Um, and their conclusion, amongst tons of other data they've got, is that one in five adults in the United States experience some kind of mental illness every year. So to put that in perspective, 20% uh, of the people on this call on average would face some kind of mental health issue um, this year um, going about their daily lives. And those, those issues can obviously vary in extent and severity, um, but this is an important and prevalent issue that is generally uh, not recognized as well as it ought to be. Specifically for those of you who work with entrepreneurs, um, there's a sort of uh, informal saying that you've gotta be a little bit crazy to be an entrepreneur. Uh, and the sad reality of that, in fact, is you have to be quite a lot crazy to be an entrepreneur. And the, the prevalence of mental health related issues among entrepreneurs is higher than it is among the general population. Uh, and there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, there's a lot of correlations and causations in both directions. Um, but entrepreneurs, uh, according to a, uh, an article a few years ago, are, are touched by fire to provoke, to pro you know, provoke them into being entrepreneurs. Uh, and make them particularly vulnerable to uh, mental health issues and work in a way, uh, in unstructured ways, in positions of responsibility with a lot of people relying on them and all kinds of things that make uh, that situation uh, as stressful as, as any other career. Um, but particularly with all these people relying on you if you're the founder, uh, particularly acute levels of stress that you might, you might face. Uh, all of that is the historical backdrop. The particularly bad news recently is that COVID has done a lot to increase mental health issues across the general population and across founders as well. So incidents of mental health challenges are up, substance use is up, suicidal ideation is up, or all these bad things that you, you see as other secondary effects of COVID, um, all of those things are up to various degrees, some of them pretty shockingly up and um, unpleasantly up. Uh, so all of that together makes this a sort of topical uh, challenge that uh, we face uh, as a society and as an entrepreneurial ecosystem, uh, perhaps more so than we have in the past. The good news is people are more uh, cognizant of it now. Uh, there are more resources out there to address some of these problems now than they used to be. Uh, and so that's part of the reason that Erin asked us to, to provide some of this content to you today. 
uh, I guess one obvious question is why on earth am I doing this? So uh, as you probably know, venture capitalists, private equity investors are pretty much the definition of evil. Uh, so why on earth is this something that um, applies to you know, angel groups like Venture South and, and venture capitalists and others? Uh, why do you have people like me writing things like the, the newsletter that hopefully most of you got uh, about mental health resiliency and tools to help entrepreneurial founders um, given that we are, you know, inherently evil at, at the bottom of it. And the, the backstory to that answer is that one of the things that we do at Venture South as part of trying to persuade people to invest in companies, we set up this nonprofit called Venture Carolina, which I'm not going to spend a ton of time on, but the mission of that entity is to educate entrepreneurs specifically on how to raise money. Um, there are a lot of great resources on how to be entrepreneurs. You guys are creating a bunch more videos and you know, great materials on how to prepare financial statements and the basics of being a successful business person. Um, but there was a gap for us and it was important to, for, for our business to help people do better at raising money. So we've got a whole suite of workshops along the lines of, you know, how to fundraise, what deal terms look like and all of that. But one of the things that we didn't really have is something to help entrepreneurs get in as useful, how to stick around as an entrepreneur, how to stay in the game, how to be resilient in the face of constant no's that you get from everybody when you're trying to build a business, from your customers to fundraising sources to whatever it is, uh, you'll be on the receiving end of a lot of no's. Um, you have to persevere. You have to uh, walk a fine line between never taking no for an answer and not damaging your reputation by not taking no for an answer when you, when you need to. Um, lots of that kind of training that there isn't a ton of material for. Um, and so we wanted to try to bring some resources to the table to help people be resilient enough that the rest of our educational content was something that they could actually uh, get to and, and find some benefits from. And there really wasn't a ton of that material out there. The other side of the spectrum for us as early stage investors, um, it, one thing we, we notice a lot of um, and comparing sort of South Carolina and the upstate of South Carolina with other places where there's a lot more entrepreneurial ventures, particularly the sort of high tech technology ventures that we, we are focused on, um, is that other places have a much higher tolerance of failure, much more support for companies to try things, iterate on things, close things down if they're not working and try again, uh, and have a much more sort of robust system for, for that kind of creativity than a more traditional society like South Carolina um, might have. Uh, so on the front end, there's the resiliency of getting into this education. And on the back end, there's this uh, coping with failure, the, the sort of ecosystem's ability to um, absorb failure and benefit from people doing that. Uh, and so between those two things, coping with failure and resiliency, we wanted to put together some, some material to help people with that. The bad news is, of course, being evil investors, we didn't have any knowledge of any of those things or much time to go do something about it. So the serendipitous uh, connection was that we found uh, Robin and the Sharpen team in Spartanburg that had built some really good content for helping other uh, sort of uh, constituencies deal with similar mental health issues. So at the time we met Robin, uh, her, her platform produced a lot of useful content for veterans to help them reintegrate back into civilian life and, and be uh, you know, productive and healthy members of society after being deployed. Um, and so it turns out that our members invested in Sharpen a, a couple of years ago um, and it quickly became apparent to us that that was our answer for producing content that um, could help other entrepreneurs get into a position where Robin had got her company uh, to, go, to go raise money and stick in the game and build something uh, robust and meaningful um, for, for everybody. And so that's a long sort of preamble to get to what the actual product is, which is um, a, a, a technology platform for founders to help them navigate the pitfalls and the mental health challenges of being a founder and it's called Sharp and Founder. And uh, so that's um, what you can see on the screen there. I'll drop a link for that into the chat so uh, you guys can go look at it uh, live outside of me if you if you would like to, uh, if I can manage to do that. Okay. Um, and so uh, that's the, the sort of product that we have. Um, I do want to say that this isn't intended to be a pitch. This is free to everybody. There's no need for anybody to send me a check to go use this. Um, the, um, we've been fortunate to find some partners to make this available to entrepreneurs in the upstate for free. Uh, so wanted to make sure you knew about it. 
uh, and were able to use it to the extent that you want to or can do with the with the entrepreneurs that you work with or serve or or just know um, to, to know that that's out there. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick snapshot of what it is, uh, um, why we think it sort of exemplifies some of the best practices around resiliency. Uh, so it's a it's an app. Uh, it's an app platform with um, sort of a, a, a closed community that entrepreneurs log into. Uh, and in that, in that platform, they can see videos of other entrepreneurs explaining their various mental health challenges. Um, I will try to play this video for you. It almost definitely won't work. So I tell you what, I'll, I'll also drop that into the chat so you can follow along with that um, if you would like to. Um, locally on your computer while I play it and you guys can't. Paul? Yes? It is playing, but the sound is a problem. Okay. I yeah, figured that might be the case. So hopefully you've got the link so you can listen to that yourselves um, if you if you want to. Um, it's just a snippet of uh, some of the entrepreneurs that we videoed telling about their, their, their experience coping with identifying and reacting to failure and how they define that and, uh, and what steps they took to feel better about the, co the constant peril of being a, a failed entrepreneur and, and how you can you can deal with that and um, be resilient to the challenges that you face. And it's just, just one of the snippets from one of the modules that are, are, are there for uh, entrepreneurs to, to use. And the, one of the reasons that it's powerful is that it's all very well listening to somebody who doesn't know what they're talking about, telling you that this is a you know challenging mental health journey, but far more powerful is watching your peers share their stories about how they dealt with a situation that you as an entrepreneur are in. And so there's a lot of clinical validation behind that kind of technique, video-based, peer-to-peer, clinical, clinically validated learning um, that, that is impactful for entrepreneurs. So that's sort of what it does. It covers everything from sort of not severe clinical things like stress or anxiety, right through to truly severe clinical things like opioid, or opioid abuse and substance abuse and suicide ideation. So wherever you are on that mental health challenge spectrum, there's some content that's relevant for you. Um, and there are included in the platform is the resources you need to go do something about it. People you can contact from the National Suicide Helpline if, if you know, things are really acute um, to you know, various support organizations and other things that, that you can use. So the point is to try to intercept entrepreneurs um, when they're starting to struggle with these mental health issues to help them build their resiliency on the front end so these issues aren't so impactful. But if the issues do become, you know, severe and, and difficult for them, but they have places to go to turn to. Uh, and so that's what the platform does. Um, one of the things that I personally like about it is I don't need to be an expert in diagnosing mental health issues in the people that I work with. So we've got 50 something portfolio companies in our portfolio. As my wife will attest, I am hopeless at empathy and, and emotional quotient. Um, so there's no way that I can tell if somebody needs this product or not. And I think that's probably true for most people. Um, so what we do is we just give it away to all of our portfolio companies. They go use it if you want to. Um, and some of them do, some of them ignore it. The ones that don't ignore it are usually the ones that need it. Um, and they can sort of dig in to as much extent as they want to and benefit from it as much as they want. Um, and so one of the things I wanted to do was not only let you know it was there, but also let you know that this is something you can give away. You don't have to have a clinical referral to go use it. Um, you can just give it directly to all the entrepreneurs that you meet um, and, and it will have a positive impact on some people, probably people you don't know that it's gonna have a positive impact on. Uh, so that's, that's, what it, that's what it's for. Um, there's always a catch in things. So uh, usually people end a presentation, at least to me, with saying we're trying to raise money from you guys. So this is the catch. In this case, there isn't a catch. As I mentioned, we're, you know, we aren't trying to sell this to people. Um, there's no obligation for anybody to use it if they don't think it's useful, uh, but it's there. Uh, and wanted the ecosystem as a whole to benefit from it because a lot of work has gone into building it. Um, and we think it's having a positive impact on, on the people that we've managed to get it in the hands of. Um, I think there's a, a few hundred entrepreneurs using it. Um, 
there are tens of thousands of entrepreneurs around the upstate alone that, that might find this useful and millions around the southeast that might um, so to the extent that you're coming across and helping entrepreneurs in a variety of ways that, that we aren't seeing, um, we wanted you to have that in your toolkit for them as well. Um, so I think that probably covers it um, from, from me, but I'm very happy to answer questions and uh, let Robin answer some of the questions too, if you have some that, that stumped me. Oh, that was just great. Uh, thank you very much. Um, questions, everybody? Anybody? Feel free to unmute yourself and to, Laurie, looks like you might have something. No? Hey, Paul, this is Mark. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. Uh, are we free to share this link, like, on our social media? Yeah, put it anywhere you like. Yep. Okay. Yeah, if you have, if you have entrepreneur resources on the things that you do, uh, yeah. happy for you to lift it, lift it as a link. It should all work as a free code that is built into it for people to sign in. So, yes, please do. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Paul, uh, Steve Johnson, SERA. Question. Steve. Have you seen any kind of trends in mental uh, issues or challenges due to the stay at home, working, not going to an office, either positive or negative, and how, how both employers and employees are handling that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I might probably defer some of that to Robin because she knows the clinical issues. Uh, certainly speaking from experience, those things have not been easy personal experience. Those things have you know, released a whole lot of different challenges personally and with, within members of our team. How do you, you know, handle your time, work-life balance, child care balance, all of that. Um, things haven't got less stressful in the last six months on all of that stuff, uh, personally. Uh, and I don't know that the CDC data that I, that I had on the screen earlier broke out that kind of um, subject matter, but it would not surprise me at all if that was uh, um, already sort of clinically recognized. Uh, but maybe Robin might have a source or two that, that beats me on that. Yes, um, I am also on the corner of Church in Maine here in Spartanburg, so sometimes it gets loud with sirens. So if I mute, it might be because there's a siren coming. Um, but it's great to, to meet everybody. I just wanted to add to that question, Steve. Um, what we have actually seen in terms of data on the platform is um, an increase in not only time, uh, on the Sharpen Founder resource. So right now that is averaging right around seven minutes and that is non, there is no push notification or sort of harassment. Um, and prior to this presentation today, I just looked at our data um, from when this resource launched pre-COVID to where we are today. The increase has been um, absolutely on the, the modules around stress management and anxiety disorders. Um, we also know nationally that um, anxiety disorders and depression have increased by over 75%. So though the, the, it used to be that the data we were looking at were around 20% of, of individuals might be struggling with mental health, we're now seeing more like one in three. And these things are presenting in all different kinds of ways, especially given COVID. So it's very proactive, this resource, in terms of an upstream way to proactively look at mental wellness, um, get the conversation started in a way that Paul described is very um, non-stigmatized and discreet, and then connect those individuals to those appropriate resources here in the in South Carolina. Um, so, so those are my numbers from what we've we've been seeing on the platform. I can believe it. Yeah. That's... yeah thanks, Robin. One of, the, one of the particular challenges that entrepreneurs and founders have is sort of social isolation, feeling like you're the only one, there's nobody to talk to that could help with, with this stuff. Um, and being actually socially isolated as well as mentally socially isolated has you know, doubled or compounded that problem. So um, this, is not, this is not something that's going away anytime soon. There's also an increase um, of the, what we call them the social emotional skills builders. So those are kind of called some of the things you were referencing earlier, but as we would have predicted, that's sort of the second category of most uh, consumed modules and content within the system. And those are things like managing difficulty with feelings and emotion regulation, 
relational stress. So obviously with all of us being at home longer, we're also seeing that relational tension sort of increase. And so all of those resources are within the Sharpen platform and they're built um, in collaboration with the partners here in the upstate. So it's really important to know that this, um, this is such a collaborative platform that really is aggregating the greatest thought leaders in our region around mental health and primary prevention. So that's exciting to see too. So we really kind of take the lead on that in our state. Robin, this is Trey Tease. How are you? Hey, Trey. I'm good. How are you? Good. Doing well, thanks. Um, two, two questions. Uh, one, as far as the links to, to resources, the links to help, yes. um, is there any feedback mechanism or any, any fail-safe mechanism to, to make sure that, that if a link is clicked that it is followed up on? In terms of the person actually logging in, is that what you mean? Oh, if someone if someone logs in and 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 wants a referral to the suicide absolutely network. Yeah, so we have an internal protocol for ongoing um, engagement and connectedness within the the resiliency technologies platform, and that is a whole host of different methodologies. But we can um, stay in touch with those individuals. Um, we can also see if they're reaching out for help or they want more information, uh, we get that information and we, we can stay in communication with them and make those referrals. Great, thank you. And the second question is putting maybe two and two together from this meeting today, seeing the, the resource videos that are anticipated for the, for the website, yeah. the 10 to the top um, entrepreneurial website, could those also be deployed effectively through the Sharpen app? Absolutely. From our perspective, our app can deploy any video and or multimedia resources that exist. So we're always very interested in aggregating kind of other, other great uh, resources that are out there that I would put back to Aaron and, and the others. But um, from our perspective, that's sure. very easy to do. Thanks, Robin. Thank, Thank you, you, Trey. Marnie, did you have a question? No, okay. Um, That's the thing Amy had her hand up. Uh, oh, Amy, I'm sorry. Amy, did you have a yeah, uh, yeah. I was just wondering if, if this group, entrepreneurial group, is one that is less prone to seek help or more open to help. And, and do you see any barriers? And how did you approach trying to take down those barriers? Or how would we approach um, in the way that we post or make it available? to remove some of those barriers. Paul, you want to start on that one? Or? Uh, uh, well, so I don't know if I'm qualified to compare entrepreneurs sure. to other groups, so maybe you can do that one, Robin. Yeah. I can just tell you some of the strategies that, that have been working. Um, certainly the sort of destigmatizing with the video. So the video that Paul shared, they're, they're in, immediately folks, when they see other people like them, then they kind of are reduced in that sort of sh stigma and shame. Um, that increases engagement with a tool like this. Another strategy that we've developed, and I'm happy to share it with, I'll share it with Paul and Paul can share it with you all. We have um, sort of every week a stress management activity that we would email out to populations and then they can engage in, in this case, Sharpen Founder afterward. So they're really quick little five minute tips that then have increased engagement into the app so you can do more of that type of activity. So it's a little more proactive. Uh, in the approach. Um, and we can also provide um, social tiles, little badges for social media that sort of help connect founders to the resource so that they A, know it's there and B, um, can access it. I have a question. Uh, you had mentioned that you have partners and you have somehow availability. Are you looking for other people that it would be helpful resources for the people that access the, your system? Or are you? Absolutely. Yeah, we're always so, looking to collaborate and partner and brainstorm. That would be fabulous. So how would someone go about doing that? I can give you my uh, contact information in the chat box. Okay, thank Put you. in there now, yeah. Thank you, Raj. So if you would go over again, how we get this the app out to all the entrepreneurs we work with go to the link 
And I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep. So the easiest way is just simply click on that that link on the Venture Carolina website or on the Sharpen website itself. Um, and they can they can log in entirely remotely. Uh, if you are still meeting people in person, we can give you a little card that you can give to entrepreneurs um, to help that uh, if they if they don't immediately have access to sort of the emails you're sending them. Uh, but we think that the sort of the tech route probably works most effectively for people. Good. And I guess it would be best to do that from our phone since we're looking uh, at installing an app. Uh, so, so the, the, it is an app on a phone. It's also completely usable just through the website too. So okay. it's a web app as well as a phone app. Uh, if you're giving giving people links on a phone, it's a slightly different process, but but basically the same idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Um, it is two o one, and so we are uh, finished with the we we are at the end of our one hour. Uh, so we are going to stay on the line in case anybody wants to stay and chat and ask more questions or just talk to each other about anything ecosystem related or anything related to supporting entrepreneurs. Or if you are looking for a particular resource, you've got an entrepreneur that you're like, ah, I don't know where to find this. Please stay on. We will be here to talk and chat until nobody else is around. So Robin, Paul, thank you very much. Um, that was excellent. Thanks to all of you who were here. Great questions, always, always so great and, and a pleasure to see you. See you on the 23rd. Thank, Thanks, you. Thank you. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thank you. Yeah, and Thanks, I'd Aaron. just like to say that the Sharpen crew is super. We have been working with them, what, a couple of years now and they are just fabulous and they're doing fabulous work. Thank you, Steve. We feel the same way about SCRA. Great. <laughs> right. yeah. Thank you. See, this is why I can't wait to tell the world <laughs> how right. great our upstate South Carolina is. <laughs> I figure that's probably why we got picked because in South Carolina? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool stuff. So, yeah, Trey, did you have a question? No, I just, th thanks a lot. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> is anybody, oh, uh, Paul, I have a question for you. Yeah. At the South Carolina Business Incubation Association meeting on Tuesday, they, some gentleman from Aiken asked a question about whether or not there are any resources in Aiken for startups. And he said that he had heard that USC Aiken was doing something and nobody else seemed to know that whether or not anything was happening. Does anybody know, Paul, do you know anything like with your group down in Aiken? Are they working uh, with anybody? I do not, but I can ask. I don't think okay. they're working with anybody, but uh, uh, if they know, yeah. if there's something going on with USC Aiken in, in that regard, I'm sure they will know, so I'll ask. Okay. I am pretty sure that there is a, an incubator either underway or about to be. I know that they've been participating in our uh, virtual business incubator uh, group that we're collecting. It, it, it's a uh, a loose confederation of all the um, uh, kind of the non Greenville Charleston Columbia incubators. And we have gotten them onto a program called Startup Wind, which mm -hmm. gives them tools to uh, help their companies. But uh, I'm pretty sure that there is, uh, and the guy you're going to ask me what the guy's name is, I believe it's like Fred Humes at uh, in Aiken. Uh, and I'll look that up and I'll send that to you, Aaron. Okay, well, thank you. Sure. I also, um, I just popped a link into the chat. There's, looks like that USC Aiken, um, there's a business consultant there. Yeah, we have a business consultant with the SBDC there. He's also a professor there. Okay, that's what I okay. thought. Yeah, good. Good. Paul, isn't the Aiken guy a professor or is that? Yeah, one of our one of our group leaders in Aiken is a, a finance professor at USC Aiken. Yeah. Okay, so they're they're doing they're. And we we have our meetings there. So yeah. Okay. Um, does anybody do fast track up here? No. Okay. Uh, by the way, I just looked it up. The guy's name is Fred Humes. And um, he is with something called the Southern Economic Development uh, Southern Economic Development Council. 
Okay. And, and they're, they're headquartered in Atlanta, um, but um, I know that Fred is located in Aiken. Okay. All right, Steve, thank you. I appreciate sure. that. Um, the, also, the consultant with SBDC, his name is Brent Hoover. I, I just posted his information into the chat chat box. Oh, okay, very good. Thank you. Thanks, good. Um, anybody else looking for any other resources? Anybody? Anybody working I'm sorry, on? Sorry, if you were talking to me, I didn't hear you. Is it? Uh, is anybody else looking for any other resources? Anybody have any questions? Anybody working on something interesting? Or not interesting? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that the South Carolina Incubator Association is really coming along. Um, they've had monthly meetings now, um, and we've had good participation. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, we're forming the South Carolina Virtual Incubator Association, which is more the outline uh, places like uh, Gaffney, uh, Rock Hill, Florence, uh, Aiken, and um, that that's going well. And we're about to name a new director of SE Launch, thankfully, because I've been the interim director for about uh, two and a half months. So the person is Russell Cook. Russell is coming out of Comporium. Sure. Uh, he uh, is head of their ventures area and uh, will be made public. Well, I probably just did make it public. <laughs> there you go. Public, public what, what, is, what, is, what was encouraging to us is that we posted this job and we had people from Silicon Valley, from Chicago, from New York, um, uh, and all apply. We had 17 people apply. Uh, but Russell actually was with the launch program uh, in the early days and was one of the early founders of launch. So he is coming back 10 years later. Um, so, and our ventures area is kind of merging into launch. And so um, it'll be a continuum from early stage mentoring all the way to follow on funding. So that's kind of the update from SCRA. Well, Steve, thanks for that scoop. And, and thank you for your service. Yeah, <laughs> Steve, yes. yeah, yeah. That, thank you, uh, that's been great. And I had our, our, my last board meeting was this morning. So uh, I, I'm, you're lucky that I'm still here. And number two, I have, to have <laughs> Where are we going to go? <laughs> well, you did have Maggie with you earlier. That's true. Yeah. Her mother has her now, so. <laughs> I'll, I'll say one other thing that from the um, Innovision perspective, just seeing the number of entries that came in as well as the quality of entries that came in was very encouraging. Because we got 60, uh, well, at 60, I think they told me I counted wrong, but 50, 59. Um, and it was across the state, of course, a little bit heavy in the upstate, but, <clears throat> and 20 of those were related to COVID, the COVID category, but that's still 40, um, which is very healthy response. Um, and again, not just in number, but in quality. It was encouraging to see what's happening in the state. I think that's fantastic. And I think that's partially attributed to the uh, leadership there as well. Oh, I think yeah, it's sure. mostly attributed <laughs> <laughs> to Amy making the round. The board making the there you go. <laughs> so, well, as you know, Amy, you have a winner. I do, yes, yes, and yes. Always very proud of a winner. Thank you. Sharpen uh, one. And I was. Go ahead. And I was. I was thinking also that this may be something that we want to consider as a benefit or a follow up for all the finalists and all of those that entered. Just uh, I, I don't know how we do that. We need to think through that, Aaron and, and Michael, about how we get that message out to those again, because I think it is very valuable, Robin and Paul, and we, we need to make it available to as many as we can. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thought, and maybe you guys have already thought of it, 
is there's organizations like the Kauffman uh, Foundation that I think would be very interested in what's going on here from a research perspective. So uh, aggregated data and so forth uh, and some feedback. In fact, I might suggest that depending on the results of this pilot, I guess I'll call it a pilot here, um, that there could be some interest on their part for a national or international rollout of it. So you might keep that in mind as well. They, they call them national resource partners. Mm -hmm. I think that's the official mm -hmm. name of what they call them. Um, if anybody, can, pardon me? Yeah, it hadn't occurred to me to approach them using that research and data angle, but that, that might be a nice way to get into, into them. We can't afford to roll it out to everybody internationally from the Venture Carolina budget. So we have to find some financing partners along the way to help do that. Uh, but, um, but agreed, if we could get some, some endorsement from an organization like that, that would be very helpful to, to everybody. Steve, are y'all getting the SERA and SE launch companies on the platform? Go on, Steve. Go on, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> it helps if I unmute. Yeah. We've, we've had, um, Robin, how many, how many have participated? How many companies? I only yeah. know by um, people's email addresses and phone numbers, so I actually don't know the name of each company. Okay, all currently. right. Okay. And same with the VMS, you know, mentees. It's another population. Um, Mm -hmm. there, what are there, 20 companies or so? Mm -hmm. Michael, aren't there more? Uh, I'm sorry, what's that? 20 BMS, BMS mentees. But would that be a Ken thing? I, I have to admit, I'm double zooming right now, so I missed <laughs> it. <laughs> that's called, that's oh, called stress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I, I actually there didn't is, know it was possible until today. <laughs> I, I wondered why one eye was going one eye was going the other. Well, Steve, it was nice of you to keep that to yourself and not, you know, attribute it to my normal self. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was uh, the question, Amy? <laughs> Amy, how many mentees do we have in BMS? I'm just thinking that's another population that could, I, I know a number. Sure. Yeah, I think we're running somewhere in the, I'm trying to visualize, about 20. Oh, okay. Plus or minus. Um, would, would Brenda be the one to talk to about this? Sure. I mean, yeah, Brenda would probably be a good place to start. And, um, and I could, uh, I'd be uh, willing to take on this communication if you'd like. Because I think if, you know, maybe if we rolled it out en masse, it might be less stigmatized if you've been doing one-on-one -on -one. Sure. right um yeah and so costas over at uh, the sbdc do y'all ever use tools like this which, which tool is it that I, I think i missed the part about which tool it was the sharpen founder no we have not used at least to my knowledge we have not uh, i guess I, I would i would want to ask earl because i know if anyone has expanded out beyond the norm, it's going to be Earl because he's he's more tech savvy than most of us, and I'm a little bit more than the rest of rest of us. So I I'll definitely I'll I'll ask Earl and see if he's if he's got some insight into it. Okay, Paul, maybe you can. Laura, let's talk. Yeah, and, and let's talk about the, the Innovision finalist and winners um, group. It could be even a, I, I don't know how, I don't know if we'd get more by just saying it's a catch up with an award winner from 2017 and here's what you're doing, as opposed to, gosh, do you need help? Um, uh, or, um, so I, I think we could do it either way that you think is gonna be most effective in getting to the most people and attending. Great. Paul, are you going into the office any? Well, I guess Earl's not yeah. either. Because, you know, it might be that you could stop by and see Costas and Earl one day. Yeah, happy to do that. Like a, yeah. a Zoom meeting or something. That wouldn't yeah. be a problem at all. 
-hmm. Yeah, happy to do it. So we, we've generally found giving no pitch to it, not saying you guys need this, just saying it's here. We offer it to everybody. Um, there's no stigma to it. You know, we're not saying you need it. We're just saying it's there. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go use it, use it. Um, it has proven to be low friction and doesn't upset anybody and, and actually pretty effective. People do seem to be using it. So um, mm -hmm. uh, just as a passive link on websites of resources, you know, just having it around is helpful and people can find it if they need it. Has any, anything promotional or um, instructional been put together relative to itself? As I think about it, can, I, I got the concept from your presentation today and, and I'm excited by, I think, what this can be. But uh, kind of the next step would be short of going in there and looking at what the modules are, whatever. It might be helpful to just have some sort of overview of, you know, what kind of modules, what kind of help, what kind of stresses, for instance, you know, if you think of from a marketing perspective, you know, yeah. what are the top five uh, stresses that entrepreneurs right. have? So I think to just say, you know, we've got the shrink in the box, go, to, yeah. go uh, visit is probably <laughs> not enough. But if on the other hand, you were to say, do you stay up at night worrying about whether you can make cash flow? They say, oh my gosh, I, I, I lose sleep every night about that. And if that, and if I go see the shrink in the box to help me with that, man, I'm, I'm you know, let me go. So just a thought that it's a great idea. put some uh, thought into that. And then we would be more than happy to kind of help you get that out to the masses. Sure, we could work on something like a little, you know, almost like a flyer that goes with the link or something so that yeah. it makes it super easy. Yeah, yeah. kind of, a, you know, to learn more or whatever, yep. but because I'm assuming that they need to log in and do some registration sort of stuff and the like. I, um, there right? is. And so yeah. I, I don't want to say that's a huge barrier, but particularly in this area, the first question I would be thinking if I was an entrepreneur, oh my gosh, now I'm on the radar, right? I'm like yeah. on the list. <laughs> so I think we might need something more to get them through that initial hurdle, yeah. right? Um, so depending on how much energy you're able to put into this, you know, that would be great. And, yeah. you know, I'm certainly uh, willing to help. For instance, if we can get some traction, let's say with a group like Next, maybe we could get a testimonial from one or two of them and mm -hmm. you know that sort of thing and then i think that would further help right um for instance they could address some of the common barriers right i think the the, the biggest barrier would be the stigma so if if some you know an, a person who's already used it says hey you know i was reluctant to use it because and wow i'm sure glad that i you know pushed myself through that because it was really helpful and, it, and this is not for the, the weak or the, you know, the flawed. This is mainline stuff we worry about every day. Yep. I would agree with, with Michael. It's like there's, there's still some level of stigma to it. Yeah. Nothing like what it used to be 30, 40 years ago where if you went to mental health, you're insane and you, you're going to get blackballed, whatever. But but I believe that there still is a, a level of stigma that uh, and fear that people people have that they'll be held against them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And point. there's also the, the macho thing, right? Hey, I'm tough. I can handle it, right? <laughs> I don't need to go to no shrink to yeah. fix it. All right. So, so I'll come clean. I admit I have flashbacks seeing all these people who were losing their businesses and wanting to start a business that had no business starting a business especially right now wanting to start a open up a nightclub right now and a, <laughs> and a bar right now I, I get flashbacks to like when my dad had to go bankrupt because somebody wouldn't pay him they they defaulted on a, on a on a job and stuff so yeah i get flashbacks but i mean it's just like <laughs> if, if i had hair i'd pull it out <laughs> So, so Carlos, is that like startup PTSD entrepreneur? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, um, th this whole resiliency, uh, Michael, I'm just brainstorming here, but the whole resiliency um, as a CEO has many different meanings sure. um, and how you lead. And this could just be part of, say, a three series on resiliency, you know, part, part two or part three of a 
series of podcasts or whatever, or webcasts or whatever on resiliency um, with, yeah. And, and I think that could be something that would remove or bring in more people as well. Uh, so if I, I go back, or go, go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. Ross? Go ahead, Michael. Uh, if I just pick up on Costas's PTSD thing, I mean, there's a, a mental health phenomena that's probably more acceptable. In other words, it's, it's probably more accepted that I could have PTSD from being a soldier. And maybe we can make that, that uh, analogy with being an entrepreneur, right? Uh, Paul already said that you have to be crazy in order to do this. And so if you, one could maybe even play on that, right? And say, you know, it's well known that you have to be crazy to be an entrepreneur. Why don't you get some help? Yeah, right. <laughs> anything, anything we could do to kind of lower that stigma and, and get people to engage, right? And maybe have I some can, fun with it. Yeah. I can uh, tell you because uh, I've been a very strong mental ad advocate for about 25 years now. And I remember the times when uh, I started as a public speaker, when no one knew what mental health was. And just like Costa said, uh, it was something you just didn't talk about and people basically thought you were insane or crazy or were scared of you or didn't know what to say to you, which is still the case today, regardless of what you have. If someone does have something, let's hope they don't. If they have cancer or if they have diabetes, they, people just don't know how to interact, have the interpersonal communication skills. And that's a big, big issue and a challenge uh, to solve this. And so just recently, I had written a letter to the Surgeon General and also sent it to our governor, because like I said, I've been in this space for a long time, and it's my business's uh, live and holistic community mission is to solve mental health. And so my thing is, is that where we were in the past, when we get past Costas and getting people out of Bull Street, was then we had these community residential care facilities. And that's fine and everything, but what happens there is, is that then the isolation starts to set in and, and we had these, what we called sheltered workshops, where basically it was like, oh, you're in this population, you can't interact with all these other people because they won't really know how to, to work with you or help you or, or, you know, vice versa, because again, of the interpersonal communication is just not there. Yeah. Um, and so now we've advanced past that. And of course, medication came along. And it's like a lot of things, if it's diagnosed accurately and it's the right treatment, and it doesn't always have to be medication, but if it is the right treatment, then you really have an excellent opportunity of continuing someone's life. But a lot of these commercials that make it seem like it's just go seek treatment and everything's done, it's just not like that. That would be like saying, go get a tennis coach and after one or two lessons, you're gonna be a Grand Slam champion. It's just not gonna happen. Um, and so that interpersonal communication, so I sent him basically what we've been advocating for and I've been involved with all types of different groups and they all have their, at the past, in the past, they were all going towards that one miracle solution right? Whether it was funding a bunch of pharmaceutical companies to come up with a cure-all drug. And it used to be like that. And that was their marketing approach. And that's what they were hammering. And I've always had the neutral approach. And my approach is basically, let me look at your specific situation, what your dreams and goals are. And then let's see what has to be done or, or how and, and what to do to get you to that next level of living a robust life, living life to its fullest. And so simply, well, what, just to paraphrase or summarize what my letter said to the Surgeon General and other people I've been advocating to the governor is first of all, is this interpersonal communication. Just the fact that people are willing to listen to what I'm having to say who don't have it or might not even know somebody. Usually people do know someone and it's like, could be the founder and the executive of a company. I mean, it's not like that. I mean, there's the NBA basketball players that have it. It's just that once somebody has that, they sometimes tend to think because in the past of the stigma that something's really wrong with them. And sure, there's a problem. There's a health issue. I mean, that's what it is. It's a medical issue for the most part. So one is the interpersonal communication and that has to happen with between the individual, the doctor, but it doesn't stop there 
because that's where a lot of families get into trouble is because they've been told that, hey, they've got treatment for this. Just go to the doctor and then you'll be fine and you can come home just like when you had sore throat and everybody will all be okay. Yeah. Well, it just, it just doesn't happen that way, like I said. Um, and so the practical education needs to be done. One is on the interpersonal communication skills, on the actual condition. It would be like sending someone to go drive a car at 16 without having practical education on driving a car, which is crazy. Uh, and then they would have to have that interpersonal, there's too many silos right now. So they'd have to have that interpersonal communication with uh, not only their doctor, okay. but with I their, with their uh, I didn't Michael, you you're Ross, not Michael. on mute. Yeah. There you go. And uh, yeah. with their doctor, <laughs> uh, with their family, and then with their employer and employment, with their community, and if they're in school, with their school. Yeah. And so I can give you example after examples that patients either currently, because I don't know that there's a law, uh, every, but every doctor is different, they're trained differently, there's not a, 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 a high standard, so to speak. And then some people in the past, they were never told, first of all, about the importance of providing that support network like that. And so those silos still exist. So it's a systemic barrier as well as a strategic barrier. And then it is also, the other part is, is that these medications have side effects, okay? And hopefully they are diagnosed right and they have the right treatment. But if they don't, well, this thing's got a window. It's got a half-life. It just stops working and, and the illness tries to get through the code. And then all of a sudden you get the bad symptoms again and it becomes like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And so not knowing that, that there are side effects and what to do if the side effects occur is a huge thing that's not a part of treatment standard. The other thing is, is just when to take it. I mean, some people, they need to take that medication at night, not during the day because it's gonna knock them out or some other reason, whatever it may be. It could be that during the day they're fatigued and if they take that medication, they're going to be more fatigued or vice versa. You know, there's just different and it's all situational and based on a lot of factors on exactly what your dreams and goals are. Your treatment and everything that you're going to do and your lifestyle adjustments, which are huge now, is going to need to happen. And that's with your family, with your employer being able to go in there. And again, these are all highly individualized. It doesn't mean that everybody has the same thing, but this conversation and these interpersonal communication is just not occurring and people are suffering. They're struggling. Some of them are dying. Some of them are having suicidal yeah. thoughts. Some of them are committing suicide. Well, and Raj, and then, that, oh, excuse me, Raj, that is exactly why we're here today. And I think that once you look around, on the sharpened platform, you'll see that it starts to accomplish some of that because mm -hmm. it is it is not one dimensional. Yeah, uh, and well, that's important. And yeah. I'm looking forward to talking to Robin because- yeah, yeah. definitely, reach out to me. Another okay. thing is, is nutrition. Oh, the yeah. doctor oh, yeah. can show you yeah. how, how important <laughs> it is. And <laughs> exercise, exercise daily, whether it's walking or regular exercise mm -hmm. without be getting injured and how to right. prevent injury. People don't know that either. These yeah. are all practical educations that can actually give a solution That's instead it. of putting a Band-Aid. But I do think that what you're doing is amazing and we need more people uh, doing these things, but I'll be happy to talk to Robin. Good. Well, good. good. Well, and our yeah. job, oh, excuse me, Robin. Is, I was just gonna say, Raj, please reach out if you have my email in there somewhere. I do, um, yeah, I do. we will. We'll yeah. send it in the, the follow-up email to, um, Justine said that we have to be off by 2.45. We've already stayed on extra 30 minutes. Uh, wow. Thanks <laughs> to all of you. Um, I guess, you know, it's amazing. I, I, I forget about how when we were all in the room together, it was just constant talk. Mm. The whole, uh, whole two right. hours. <laughs> So many great resources. Erin, uh, um, you know, the Chamber's been doing the Community Matters uh, feature since COVID started. And I don't know that we've actually addressed mental health for entrepreneurs, but I've got a question in um, to our Marcom people right now. I'm going to share a resource. If anybody's in Greenville, if you have not already applied for the CARES grant, we don't want to send any of that money back. 
So I'm going to share that resource and then I'm going to find out um, if we've got anything on mental health, maybe even plugging in this platform um, and, and sharing some of these resources, because I think this is really one of the issues that's impacting people so so Thank desperately you. right now during Good. this. And anything time. you can do to share it with your members too. Absolutely. Marnie. Absolutely. Yeah, Marnie, I was actually looking at that CARES Act to see if there was some way that that overlapped with the Sharp and Founder tool. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't completely obvious to me how, it, if it would or how, um, but thanks for raising it. I'll go back and have another look yeah. at it. Yeah. I, I just went ahead and put the, uh, the actual event is in the, is in the chat right now. So that's on September 1st. We'll actually be having someone speak specifically to the application process, yep. um, who qualifies for that, and how they can go ahead and apply for that. So I would Great. urge all of the entrepreneurs in the Greenville County area to, to take a look at that. Terrific. Great, yeah. thank you. Yeah, we'll spread the word on that. Good. Marnie, are y'all going to do the Minority Business Accelerator this year? Yes, mm -hmm. we when are. Is it starting? Uh, I believe it's actually already going on. Uh, we have the Excellence in Entrepreneurship event which will be virtual, of course, uh, happening in October. Um, but the Minority Business Accelerator, I believe, is is happening now. Uh, and there'll probably be another cohort starting again in the spring. Okay. I can get you some more information for it though. Okay. Well that would be that would be great because we it's part of VMS, there's a lot of um, founders in it right now who mm -hmm. need a lot of just basic business skills um, development and okay. education and development. And we're trying to figure out we're trying to figure out where to send them. Well this would probably be a really great place to send them. I will uh, let me put a link of that into the chat as well. And then we do have a 2020 cohort. Uh, hold on, I was just looking at that. Too many links open. Okay. okay. Well, I need to drop off. So thank yeah, you again, Erin, for letting us spend some time talking about this. We appreciate appreciate you letting us do that, and everybody obviously attending. That was that was great. So thanks for letting us do that. Well, thank you, and remember, all of us just share the link, just out there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right, fabulous, y'all. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Thank great you. to see everyone. Bye. Bye. Great bye, -bye. To see everyone. Bye.